Hello and welcome back to Forge Talks and to part two of two of these Forge Talks on the Forge Rock platform. And goodness, that was a lot of forges. I'm joined again by VP of Product Management, Mary Ritz. Mary, thank you for coming back and joining me again. Thanks for having me a second time. It's always a pleasure. And uh, so Mary, last time you you likened your tour of the, of the features of the Forge Rock platform to uh, visiting Paris and quick shout out to our uh, office in Paris. Hello, guys. And so with the, the the features that you highlighted in the previous episode being like the the big landmarks and today's being more like uh, a locals tour, right? That's right. Yeah. Today we'll go off the beaten path and see some cool stuff you didn't know to look for. And guys, if you missed last week's episode, make sure you check that out. And uh, yeah, really excited to, to get a local's perspective on the 4Drop platform. So shall we crack on with it? Let's do it. In at number one, token swap. This is popular because uh, first I have to mention that um, the background of why token swap is so popular. Mm -hmm. The way applications are being developed now is changing. It used to be you would develop a monolithic application. And nowadays the movement is towards small microservices. So you build these small microservices and tie them all together. Okay. Really scalable, agile way to develop. Um, it's, it's modern, it's cool, but, but it has some identity implications. Um, so in a typical API situation, identity is layered in what we call north south. So when you want to protect an API, you give it a certain kind of token, a stateful token where before you access it, it'll reach out to the authentication server, make sure you are who you say you are, and you have access to, to get to that API. Mm -hmm. um, in microservices, what's interesting is they all have to talk to each other all the time. So that's east-west traffic. And so the traffic propagates hugely. And if you try to go back to the authentication server every time to check that you should have access, you slow everything down. And right. so uh, what you want there is these stateless tokens called JOTs where they can, um, you can reduce the latency and facilitate all of this talking. Uh, so what token swapping does, we have a product identity gateway that can sit in the middle and translate the two tokens. So you get the right token where you need every time. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's there to help these distributed architectures and uh, keep all of your, uh, keep all those applications humming quickly and keeping the bandwidth low. And number two, macaroons. And we're not talking about the French cookies, even though we do have <laughs> the Paris theme. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a cookie. It's, well, it is a cookie in the identity world. It's a new token type. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and we love it because it sits on top of OAuth 2, which is very popular, um, but mm. it fixes the problems that OAuth 2 has around fine grain scopes and delegation. Um, so the deal is with um, you take your OAuth token that you already know and love and you get to wrap it with caveats uh, to, to give that fine grain scope or that delegation. And it's been, um, well, it's been popular for a few reasons. It does solve those problems, but also the way we introduced it into the product is really easy to consume. So it's just a toggle to turn it on. It's totally backward compatible. So if you try and set this up and you send a macaroon to um, an application that doesn't understand them, it'll just go down to the OAuth token and, and nothing will break. Um, but I think it, there's a couple use cases that I think showcase how you would use it. So one is, let's say, you know, you want, you want to have more control. Oh, you're a, a newspaper, you have online media and you want to have more control over how many times people can access your site for free. We'll say, you know, Fraser, you can access five times for free and then we want you to pay. So you would wrap Thank the you. token uh, with these caveats. And each time you visit the site, kind of one gets torn off after you've gone five times, the sixth time you would have to pay. So that's one simple example of how you could use it. Um, but the other is the impersonation thing, which is pretty cool, secure impersonation. So Fraser, I could send you a QR code and say <laughs> for the next 10 minutes, you can log in as me as Fortran can do whatever you want. Send emails, update, Brilliant. you know, HR profiles, go crazy. Um, but you only have 10 minutes. And so I could allow you to securely impersonate me for some amount of time. So it's another way it can get used. Yeah. Well, on, on your head be it. 
and uh, <laughs> there you go uh, with the four drop platform macaroons that are easy to consume brilliant number three containerized directory well we're excited about this and it's been popular because when you think about the different data stores in the world they're all optimized for different things you have columnar stores relational data stores graph data stores and they some of them are really good at reading, some of them are good at writing, some of them are good at AI, ML computation. Um, the single best way to store identity data is in a directory. It's just totally optimized for a bunch of applications trying to access it to understand, you know, access your identity data. Your identity data itself doesn't change a lot. Your username and password doesn't change all that much, but you need to access it really quick and mm -hmm. often. So it provides just lightning fast speed and scalability. Um, but so it's it's the optimal data store. But as we move to the cloud world, directories were stateful um, in, in how they're designed and the cloud is stateless. So Fordrack had to do some really important work to sort of retool how directories can work to for the cloud world. And it's all about as you elastically scale up and down, how do the new directory container instances find each other when when the you know these containers are kind of ephemeral and you don't have fixed IPs. Um, mm. So we've done it. We've now have this scalable directory, which means now we have the best possible identity directory that's the most scalable available in the cloud world. And finally, Thing SDK. I love this one personally. I think device identity is super interesting. Mm -hmm. um, there's all kinds of devices and things. There's like a wristband to get into a concert. I've got like a watch. Um, there's sensors. There's nuclear reactors. There's medical <laughs> equipment, and there, you know, there, those are all different kinds of devices. Sure. Um, the ones that are called constrained devices have particular challenges. So a constrained device means doesn't have a lot of CPU power. So it's not like your phone where you can do all the cool stuff with it. It's like a wristband. I can't log into it. It doesn't have a lot of power. So how do I how do I add proper identity to these constrained devices? Mm. Um, and notoriously, it's hard to trust that this device is who they say they are. Which, in the case of uh, you know a nuclear reactor or medical equipment, is incredibly important. So we have this thing SDK so that you can infuse embedded um, and embed identity into all of these different kinds of devices so that you can trust that they are who they say they are and have them then be able to access like OF2 tokens and single sign-on and the macaroons that we just talked about. So then each of the devices can really be treated like a proper citizen because you trust it and you can relate it to different users. Um, so the Thing SDK took an area that was highly insecure and kind of a science experiment and made it just easy turnkey to get identity and all those things. Well, guys, hopefully you enjoyed seeing the sites, both the landmarks and the locals tour. Mary, thank you again for coming and doing these two episodes with me. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And guys, hope you enjoyed that. I'm feeling a little peckish now, so I might go see if we've got any macaroons in the cupboard. See you next time.